Hey everyone, I've gotten a lot of questions about what my MOS is, uh, how is it different from combat camera, and really I'm coming up on my EAS from the Marine Corps. September 4th is my last day. So I decided, you know what, I'll get in front of the camera and I'll run you through my time at boot camp, MCT, MOS school, and give you that rundown about what my job really is. All right, let's do it. Boot camp, the one thing that everybody thinks about when they hear Marine Corps. I was, I think, 17 years old on the tail end of 11th grade in high school, and all of my buddies were enlisting in the Marine Corps, and I really didn't know much about it. They were all, you know, stereotypical uh, high school guys, and they're like, yeah, guns, <laughs> and that was about it, yeah. That was, the, that was as in-depth as we got into the whole Marine Corps image. We didn't really know what our jobs were going to be, where we were going to go, what training we needed to do. So at the time, I was very overweight. Um, I think I weighed around, I probably weighed around 255, and that was just not going to cut it. So I told my friends, I told everybody at school, I was like, yeah, man, I'm going to join the Marine Corps. And they're like, you know you have to lose like 80 pounds, right? And I didn't know that. So the next year I dedicated to just losing the weight. Um, I constantly get people on my YouTube asking for weight loss tips that are easy. And it took me probably around 13 or 14 months to lose 80 or to 85 pounds. That is unreal. Like that in a year's time, I dropped an entire person. Like one of my buddies, I went out to eat with him and he was like, man, that hamburger is how much? Like one pound? That's a, that's a pound hamburger. That's a big burger. Imagine having 85 of those slapped all over your body. That's essentially like what I shed off of me. Losing weight is not easy. It took everything I had. I've never had that level of dedication to anything in my entire life. Hopefully I get that motivation for something else in the future, but like that idea of having a goal being a Marine, losing the weight, like that's all I cared about. I had all the time in the world. You're in high school, you have so much time. So I decided to invest it into losing weight. Um, I would get up on Monday mornings at 5 a.m., head to the gym and work out for an hour, an hour and a half before school. Then I'd actually get to school. And because I was kind of smart uh, between ninth and 11th grade, I took a lot of extra classes and when senior year rolled around, I had like five periods where I didn't have to schedule classes. I probably should have, but I didn't have to. So I actually put five study halls in a row at the tail end of my day after lunch. So I would go to the gym in the morning, go to school, go to class for like three classes, hit the gym at school, go to lunch, and then I would use my five study hall periods to do abs cardio, all this stuff. I'd go to the, this one study hall. I actually took a, uh, a gymnastics mat from the gym. I just kind of stole it out of there and put it in this back room and I would do my abs and I would do all that stuff back there. All right, so I shed the weight. Now I have to pick an MOS. I have to go into the recruiter's office and be like, boom, put me down. I want to be a Marine. I did that. I had an awesome recruiter. His name was Sergeant Stephen Jones. Um, and really, he kind of looked at me the first time I went in. I was, like I said, 85 pounds overweight the first time. And he looked at me like, okay, yeah, like this guy is totally wasting my time. And then I came in a couple of months later, had dropped, I think, like 35 pounds at that point. And he took me, he was like, you know what? Cool, come to our workouts. We'll get you in shape. And I did, and I enjoyed it. And then it came time to pick an MOS. Originally, I had military police put down on paper uh, and then for I don't know what reason but I backed out of military police and I went into public affairs also because public affairs at the time had like this two thousand dollar signing bonus and I was like what what money and I got to go to boot camp a little bit earlier so did I know exactly what public affairs was no I did not little did I know it was going to be the perfect fit for me. Fast forward a couple of months and here I am getting ready to go to boot camp, saying goodbye to my family. And I remember having a minor freak out. Like I just felt like 
I felt like I was at my own funeral. That sounds really dramatic, but I felt like I was at my own funeral because everybody was looking at me as if like, oh, Clayton was such a nice boy, now he's gone. And that's how I felt. So when Sergeant Jones, my recruiter, came up to the door, I was ready to get out of there. I was ready to go to boot camp, get it done with. The next day, I flew out to Paris Island. Uh, you get there and there's no turning back. <laughs> you get on the bus to get, okay, so you go to the airport and the airport has a Marine Corps liaison there and he's basically like, sit down with all these recruits and you wait until the final like four or five people come, then they shuttle you all on a bus and the bus ride into Paris Island is just, ah, oh, it's crazy, man. Like, I don't even know how to explain it, but <laughs> if there was a time to be like, uh, a mixed motions of fear, of like pride, but then, oh my God, what I do? But then pride, uh, but mostly what the heck did I get myself into? Uh, that's kind of what went through my mind. I go through boot camp. I come to find that Boot camp was easy for me. Boot camp is easy for a lot of people because you're told what to do and when to do it. And it's not hard. Like, I prepared so hard for boot camp. Just all physical, lifting weights, running every day, running till I threw up. And then I got to boot camp and the farthest you run the entire time is maybe three miles. If you have a PFT. So boot camp is definitely not as physically taxing as it is mentally taxing and not even in the way where it's like, do this math properly. Like, no, it's not that bad. What is bad is they'll be like, okay, scrub the floor, scrub the floor again, scrub the floor again, scrub the floor again. Now run and touch that pool. Now run and touch it again. Now run and touch it again. Now run and touch it again. Great. Now tie your shoes. Now unlace your shoes. Now tie your shoes. Now do that 40 more times. I felt like a toddler at boot camp. Like I felt like the drill instructors had to cater to the dumbest person in the platoon. And we had some dumb people in that platoon. So they make you do things over and over and over and over and over again. And to you, it just seems so pointless. And really it kind of is, but it's all in an effort to ready you for combat. It teaches you to do things well. It teaches you to do them correctly. Um, it's called a combat mindset is what they refer to it as. I mean, it's like, okay, at 4 a.m. I'm going to wake up, I'm going to PT, uh, I'm going to go eat chow, I'm going to go do my job, and I'm going to repeat. And really, it just kind of, that was a building block of success for me in that I was able to put up with bull crap easier. Like, I was very, not short-tempered, but like, I, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I had a very low tolerance for bull crap. I still kind of do, but it got me in that mindset that, okay, this is when I get up in the morning, this is when I go exercise, and, and it just is a very good schedule for your life. So fast forward from boot camp, uh, next I went to MCT, Marine Combat Training at Camp Lejeune. Uh, actually, I take that back, I guess it's Camp Geiger, and it was just miserable for me because I got there and like an idiot, I volunteered for something. I don't even know what they said. I was just like, yep, I'll do it. And it turned out to be Camp Guard. And Camp Guard lasted for me for an entire month, all through Christmas, all through New Year's. On Christmas Day, I had a 16 hour duty. Yeah, my tolerance for bull crap. There it is. So basically, when MCT finally did happen the next month, uh, I was so excited. It was cold, it was rainy, but I was just ready to get it done. I've never been that cold in my entire life, by the way. Like we'd be out in the field shooting guns and whatnot. And I remember having like icicles dripping from my nose. Like it would actually drip and then harden. Finally, I made it to MOS school. And real quick, I'll touch on what my MOS actually is. My MOS is 4341 Combat Correspondent, also known as Public Affairs. In the future, they might change it to Mass Communicator. That sounds creepy and also dumb. I hope they don't change it to that, but right now, it's just public affairs. My MOS school is called Defense Information School, and that was in Maryland. Now, that was awesome because for me, I lived in Pennsylvania my entire life. So when I heard I'd be that close to home, I knew that my, my family could come down and see me, my girlfriend could come down and see me. I was just like so happy. Like the closest base to my house I thought was going to be Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. That's not the case. 
Public Affairs School at, in Maryland was great for me. Defense Information School, also known as DIMFOS, basically teaches two MOSs. That is Public Affairs and Combat Camera. What is the difference between Public Affairs and Combat Camera? I get this a lot. Public Affairs does, let's see, we do social media, write stories, make videos, make graphics, a little bit of photography in there. Uh, they respond to crises, so if there's like a plane crashed on your base, you could very well be the person that's going on the news and saying, this is what happened, here's what we're doing to fix it. And basically, like, they're kind of the PR people for the Marine Corps. The best way I can explain it is public affairs is for an external audience. If I go take a photo, if I go make a video, it's for the public. Now combat camera is a little different. Combat camera is basically photography and video. Now you're like, wait a second, isn't public affairs photography and video? Yes, they are both the same in that regard. However, combat camera does not release their photos for the public 99% of the time. Why is that? Combat camera is more for documentation. So yes, we could both do the exact same training. We both know how to do photography, video, make graphics. Public affairs knows how to write and do that kind of stuff too. But essentially they're the same thing except public affairs, our information goes to the public. You'll see my stuff posted on the news or on Facebook or whatever. Uh, and then 95, 99% of the time, combat camera is just for documentation. Their stuff typically does not see the light of day. Their sole purpose is to just document and then all those photos and videos goes into a safe in a place called DIMOC and then they're just locked up. If for whatever reason the government needs to go back and see combat cameras footage, they can, but the public cannot. Uh, so that's the main difference. Public affairs, our stuff goes out, combat camera, their stuff stays in. Also, there's a bit of a cultural difference between public affairs and combat camera. Public affairs, I like to say, is like a celebration of knowledge. You walk into a public affairs shop and people are just like happy to be there, you know what I mean? And combat camera, and I know I'm gonna take a lot of heat for this, especially from you combat camera folks, but it's true in my experience that combat camera is just like, like they're very much more stern. They have very strong customs and courtesies. There's a lot of like yelling in combat camera shops. Uh, but I mean, between the two, they're both very proud MOSs. Hopefully in the future, they just get dissolved and become one. That's kind of like what the Air Force already did. They just made combat camera and public affairs one thing. But yeah, that's my job, public affairs. Now, I graduated MOS school at the top of my class and <laughs> You could tell that like some people were a little mad at me for getting the top of the class because I didn't try as hard as I probably should have. And what I mean is like if you look at my report card, you could see like when I went back to my barracks room and slept. Like when I got to the photography portion, like I did, did not do anything. I don't recommend that. But somehow by the grace of God, I got honor grad. So after I graduated and got top of my class, I got meritoriously promoted, which just means like, you did a great job, here's your promotion early. I got promoted to Lance Corporal, and then I went on to electronic journalism course, which is basically just like a two week class in video. Like I really didn't have that much formal video training ever. Like in high school, I did like one or two classes. Uh, so got through my MOS school, and then it came time for orders to my first duty station. Originally, I had orders to Cherry Point, North Carolina. Was not excited about that. Then, another set of orders came in. It said Okinawa, Japan. My girlfriend was not happy about that either. So at this point, I feel like the world is gonna end. I'm like, oh no, I'm not even gonna be in the United States, crap. Then on the very last day before I was supposed to fly out to Okinawa, Japan, I got orders to DMA, Defense Media Activity, which is, here is DINFOS, my MOS school, and right across the street, about 50 feet, is DMA. My, my girlfriend was so happy, my family was happy, I was happy, 
defense media activity is kind of the pinnacle of public affairs. It's like the hub for social media, for photography, for video. It's where everybody wants to go. Everybody in the military, as far as combat camera and public affairs, their end goal is to be at DMA. They looked at the classes and they said, okay, we want one honor grad student, which was me, and the very next student underneath. They want the first and second place students. It just so happened that that was me, somehow, don't know how. And then my friend Kathy Nunez, who was in another class for me, but she got second and that's how it worked out. Like, all of a sudden we got orders to like the best place in the Marine Corps to get stationed. So I'm happy to be at Defense Media Activity. I report there, I move all of my stuff to the new barracks and immediately I met a couple of really great people that helped mentor me. One was uh, John Tucker, he was a great broadcaster. Another was Tyler Main, who was an awesome photographer. Mark Faloga, who was my staff sergeant for the past three years. Uh, he was also a great photographer. And then I met Jimmy Shea. A lot of people know Jimmy D. Shea on YouTube as being the swim guy, marine guy, family man, that dude. Uh, and to this day, he's still my best friend. I met him as a Lance Corporal. He was a sergeant. Uh, now I'm a sergeant, and that's really weird. Like, I walk around and people are like, oh, sergeant, morning sergeant. I'm just like, man, I'm a Lance Corporal. Like, in my mind, I'm a Lance Corporal. I've always been a Lance criminal. Like, from the get-go, rank never meant anything to me. And when I showed up at DMA, some people were very much so like, you stand at parade rest for me. But... Tyler and Jimmy, like they took me under their wing and they totally were not like that. And that is kind of how I've grown to be the mentor that I am today in that I'm not super military oriented. I don't ask people to do like stand up parade rest or go do stupid stuff. Like I wouldn't ask somebody to do something that I wouldn't do myself. And I learned that from those guys. So now they're like my best friends and life is great. My time at Defense Media Activity, well, I did a lot of stuff. I did uh, a lot of broadcast work. Now, at the schoolhouse, I never did any broadcast work. I actually tried out to be a broadcaster, which is an entirely separate MOS from public affairs. And only public affairs can be broadcasters. Combat camera cannot be broadcasters, but public affairs can. So I said, okay, I'll try out and I'll go do a voice audition and immediately, they were like, ha, no, get out of here. And I was like, okay. So I got the defense media activity, met some good people. And initially I was doing the Marine Corps website, marines.mil, and I hated that. Like I promised myself that I would be doing video, like bar none. And a couple of months went by and I decided to volunteer for a shoot. And Jimmy D. Shea and I went to a Redskins game to do some sort of like very small, easy shoot. And at the time, like I didn't even know how to press record. Like I had to ask him like, hey man, like how do I, how do I make this thing record? So I was just so fresh and so new. And from that point on, I just wanted to learn everything. So I turned to Tyler, I turned to Jimmy and they taught me like, how to be in front of a camera, how to edit photos, how to make videos. And within a year, I was winning all these awards like documentary and feature and broadcasting. And I had no formal training whatsoever in video or broadcasting. And like, I obviously don't have the voice for it. And I don't know how, but I just let my personality go. Like nobody before myself or Jimmy really did what we do, like have a personality on camera. It was very much so like, huh, or, uh, like they didn't let themselves be people. And that's kind of what we wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. I just started practicing. I made my own little blog on YouTube. And within a year or two, I was making all these great videos, winning all these awards. Life was great at DMA. I got to drive home on the weekends and see my family and see my girlfriend. And that was awesome. Then, about a year ago, in 2014, yeah, 2014, I got orders to go to the Pentagon. And to me, that was like soul crushing. That was terrible because DMA is this place where like you work with the Navy and the Army and the Air Force and it's a big purple bubble and people are creative. 
And then I was gonna go to the Pentagon and have an office with no windows and just do social media. Like my job at DMA was mostly to make videos, do broadcast work, and do the Marine Corps social media. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Flickr, Pinterest, Instagram, and Vine. Got it all memorized. Then I picked up the rank of corporal. They wanted to move me to the Pentagon. We tried to fight it, but they said, you're going. And that was that. I got to the Pentagon. I moved into the barracks at Henderson Hall, and I was not happy. But I learned that no matter what position you're put in, you can make the best of it. I met some awesome officers there, made some great friends, and was able to still do a lot of great stuff. Like I was still able to go travel, do video, do photography, and I enjoyed my time at the Pentagon. And also, what an awesome resume builder. Uh, I have defense media activity and the Pentagon on my resume, and I was only 20 years old. But then the opportunity came up for a VERP. Now, what is a VERP? A VERP is an early out of the Marine Corps. We're going into a time of peace in the Marine Corps. The wars have ended, peacetime is upon us, now we have all these sergeants and corporals, and we have like no privates and lance corporals down here. So the Marine Corps in peacetime wants to flip that triangle upside down. They want only a few sergeants and a few staff sergeants, and they want a bunch of lance corporals in below. So they offered this great deal where I can still get my GI Bill, and I get out an entire year early. I did all of the paperwork. I spent day after day calling, asking for people to sign off on things. Finally, after three and a half months, I got the okay. I am going to be getting out of the Marine Corps an entire year early, and I'll be able to use my GI Bill. That news was probably some of the best news I had gotten ever. And it's not because I didn't like my time in the Marine Corps. I just felt like it was time for me to move on to something else, you know? Uh, at that point, I had, I had done the video side. I was able to improve in photography. I got to travel. I had a fulfilling career in only three years, but here I am, and I felt like another year in just wasn't going to benefit me as much as I wanted. So I decided that the choice was either college or work. And to me, college wasn't really an option because, like I said, I spent all this time working and learning and just doing all this stuff. And not to put down college because it's a great opportunity, but I didn't feel like I was going to make a difference in the world, like I want to make a difference in people's lives. So I will be doing college, but on like a night course kind of basis. I shot my resume out to a couple different places and I'm very, very, very happy to announce that I will be a teacher at the Defense Information School in Maryland uh, for the broadcast course. This is the same exact course that just three years ago turned me down when I applied and auditioned for them. And now I'll be teaching it, which is crazy. And I'll be able to teach young airmen, soldiers, and Marines just the ins and outs of broadcast. And really, it's crazy to me because I'm still trying to figure it out myself, you know? Like, I'm not your traditional broadcaster. I don't do the whole, like, oh, stand up, news. Like, I like to have a personality. I want you to be able to feel what I'm feeling and I hope you guys get that through my videos like you understand what my personality is right and that's what I hope to bring to the defense information school so if you're a young guy right now young guy young girl and you're going to be public affairs then you have a very good chance of actually being taught by me at your MOS school uh, and if you're combat camera hey you'll still be able to see me around if you're in the building so that's the exciting news I have. That is where I'll be working as of now uh, is gonna be with the broadcast department at the Defense Information School as a teacher. Pretty excited about it. Thank you for watching this video all the way through. Uh, comment below with any questions, comments, whatever. I'll respond to you as always. And yeah, hopefully I'm able to actually see some of you in person and actually teach you. Like, that's so exciting to me. Like, I get to be a teacher. I get to like help you you know what I mean like that's awesome I get to teach Ugh, it blows my mind you know Ugh, I'm done I can't even handle it all right bye